Hello, I'm Alan Hefferon, MRI technologist and MRI safety trainer for Metrosense. As the MRI world recognizes MRI Safety Week, we at Metrosense would like to share nine best safety practices to prevent injuries in MRI environments. Not long ago, Metrosense commissioned a study to determine the main causes of injuries with the goal of identifying and preventing these incidents in the future. Utilizing data from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, nine primary causes were identified. And I'll talk about each cause and methods to prevent these of the types of events from occurring at your facility. These are real world solutions that can be adopted in MRI, any MRI environment. The solutions offered would have likely prevented 74% of the reported injuries and offer best safety practices for any size facility regardless of patient volume. Our first focus is on prevention of projectile injuries. As we are aware, MRI magnets can attract objects with great force with the potential of causing serious harm or death. Following these three steps could have prevented 69% of projectile injuries described in the FDA database. Number one, our first method of projectile injury prevention is achieved by limiting access to the MRI room itself. The goal is to reduce the chance of injuries by reducing the number of untrained individuals that previously may have had access to the MRI room. By implementing a four zone scheme that limits access to each of the zones by level of screening and supervision, we can essentially lock out the people that may not have had the training to be safe in the MRI room, now known as zone four. The adoption of the American College of Radiology's four zone system has eliminated countless accidents by limiting access to those who are MRI safety trained or to those who are under the supervision of those who are MRI safety trained. Our second method of projectile injury prevention is by the deployment and diligent use of ferromagnetic detection systems. These systems provide a warning to the operator that a ferrous object is about to enter zone four and allows time to react to the alert. Ferrous metal detection systems have the potential to significantly reduce projectile accidents and injuries. It is important to remember that the ACR's recommendation is that a ferrous only detector be deployed and specifically cautions not to deploy metal detectors that cannot distinguish between ferrous and non-ferrous material. Feel free to contact me for more information concerning this. Number three, the third step is proper labeling of items in and around zone three and four. Label items entering zone four utilizing the FDA recommended criteria, which is MRI safe, the object is safe in all MRI environments without conditions, MRI conditional, the object may be safely used in the MRI environment provided that the conditions for safe use that are outlined by the manufacturer are met. And MRI unsafe. The object is known to present a safety risk in the MRI environment. These are often ferrous objects. Thermal injuries are our second focus of concern. Burn reports are increasing. The three strategies outlined here could have prevented 94% of the burn injuries studied. Number one, provide a minimum of one centimeter padding or distance from the sides and top of bore, as well as any active coil elements. As we know, we are inducing current in coils whenever we scan. Under certain circumstances, the coils can heat sometimes to the point where that heat can damage tissue. MRI manufacturers provide various types of pads and sponges. Isolating tissue from direct contact with the coil 
and sides of the bore can prevent burns. Number two, eliminating unnecessary conductors from the bore. EKG leads and wires, pulse oximetry sensors, and the like can be overlooked, especially in the acute setting. A best practice is to build a checklist, a mechanism by which the patient is thoroughly checked for these hazards. For MRI conditional monitoring equipment, ensure that the leads are properly insulated, that no loops exist, and that the wires exit the bore in a straight line. Another often overlooked conductor is the patient clothing. Metallic fibers are often woven into fabrics for antimicrobial properties. These fibers can heat in the MRI environment and cause burns to the patient. Many facilities are now having patients dressed to skin, completely in scrubs or in other similar hospital attire to reduce the chance of thermal injury. Number three, our third step to reduce thermal injury is to eliminate loops formed by patient positioning. Eliminate potential conductive loops due to skin to skin contact. Burns have resulted from thigh to thigh contact, calf to calf contact, and from forming a conductive loop from the arm to the thigh. It is recommended to isolate these body parts with air spacing or a minimum one centimeter pad or sponge. Lastly, I'll discuss hearing damage injuries. MRI systems are capable of producing noise in excess of 100 decibels. The US Occupational Safety and Health Administration state that 80 decibels is the acceptable threshold for an eight hour workday. Hearing protection should be provided to decrease noise reaching the ear to about 85 decibels. These three recommendations could have prevented 11% of the reported events. Require that everyone in the room during scanning is provided hearing protection. This includes visitors, hospital staff members, and MRI staff that remain in zone four while the scanner is operating. Number two, verify that the protection is fitted properly to ensure proper noise reduction. One method is to briefly turn from the patient and ask them something and have them respond. Proper fitment of earplugs is a point of emphasis by both the ACR's recent publication, the Manual on MRI Safety, as well as publications from the U.S. Occupational Health and Safety Administration. Number three, use multiple hearing protection whenever possible. Provide headphones over earplugs. Stock a few different types of earplugs. Some people prefer silicone over foam earplugs. Either way, check fitment prior to scanning. Keep in mind that MRI manufacturers' headphones are often designed to be used in conjunction with earplugs, as many manufacturer headphones alone do not attenuate sufficient noise. Thank you for watching. For any questions or comments, please email me at aheferon at metrosens.com and please visit our webpage at metrosens.com for more on-demand educational webinars, podcast information, and sign up for our live webinars featuring leading figures in MRI safety.